Hi! In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating the DNS rebinding attack taught in the previous lecture. As a brief recap, we know that pages of different origins, say 192.168.1.32, google.com, and friendly Kyrian is me, are not allowed to communicate with each other unless there is an explicit mechanism to do so. For example, a page at friendly Kyrian is me slash fail.html as seen here would not be able to access resources at google.com because they are obviously of different origins. The evil website would also obviously not be able to read data from internal IP addresses because again they are of different origins. However, in this demonstration I'm going to show how we can use DNS rebinding attack to fool the victim browser into thinking that we are hosted on an internal IP address and hence gain access to confidential credentials thought to be safely guarded by a client. So let us first see the page that we are going to steal information from. As you can see from the address bar, this page can be accessed by machines on the client's local area network by specifying this private IP address. Hence, information on the page should be saved from the prying eyes of the public. Let's verify this by attempting to access this page by specifying the client's external IP address instead. As you can see here, the client's external IP address is 124.197.110.153 and we will try to access the web page using this external IP address. Let us copy this into this tab over here and access the page. Obviously, the page is inaccessible because the client's router does not know who to forward the request to and hence the web page will simply not show up. However, if we can get both the client to access the internal IP address and access the contents of that page, then we can steal the sensitive information even without access to the client's network. Let's now see this attack in action. To begin with, we lure the client into visiting our seemingly benign website. Let's go to friendly Kyrian is me. Alright, it's over here. And during this first visit, the evil DNS server would reply with its authentic IP address so that it can first cache the malicious code onto the client's machine. As you can see here, this is the authentic IP address of the malicious server. Now, without the client's knowledge, the malicious code has been cached and the next time the client visits this same page, we'll then declare our IP address to be the client's internal IP address. Let's now emulate normal usage and revisit the so-called friendly page again after closing this tab and you know, doing anything that you would normally do on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's copy this URL, close the tab, okay? And then we'll open a new one here. So it's like as if we we just we're just going to visit this page afresh. Okay. And as you can see, there's something very interesting happening here. The cache exploit page is being loaded, as you can see over here, here, and attempts to access the passwords.html file. However, since my DNS server this time replied that it is 192.168.1.32, the client is now tricked into fetching passwords.html at 192.168.1.32 instead. Since the domain is still that of the malicious domain, as we can see here, obviously, the malicious script has no problem extracting the sensitive information and sending it back to the server. Now, let's see if we have successfully received this information on the server. 
okay I'll clear this previous lock and let's grab it yes so the server has successfully received this information and we have exploited the DNS rebinding attack to retrieve information from an internal IP address okay so just to confirm we can even navigate back to the client's web page to check that the information we have tallies with the one received on the server let's see so of course it does the information tallies and we see that this ability to perform cross-origin attacks is extremely dangerous and it could cause a lot of damage if used maliciously unfortunately this issue is still not fixed till this date in fact I'm using the latest version of Google Chrome and this exploit still works so I was wondering why and so I looked up the issue on the chromium bug tracker only to realize that the issue has been tagged with one fix but why you may ask well it turns out that there are legitimate reasons for a single domain to be bound to multiple IP addresses and there are mechanisms to prevent this attack from happening one of the ways to mitigate this attack is to simply check the host header of an incoming request so for example when a malicious page attempts to request for resources on another host let's see over here we can see that the host is dns.kyuan is me which is obviously not the server itself and so this request should be blocked well there are also other mechanisms to defend against this DNS rebinding attack but I'll leave that for you to explore if you're interested so I hope that you learned something cool from this video and thank you for your time